Yo, YouTubers, it's beer o'clock on my roller coaster ride channel. I know I might be giving the wrong impression that I'm drinking a lot too much lately. It might appear to my viewers that I'm an alcoholic, but I'm not an alcoholic. I just drink lots of alcohol. <laughs> so we got a, a brand new drink for you to try tonight. It's going to be my last beer review for a long time, so it's a very special one. <laughs> <laughs> Be o'clock. <laughs> Brew Dog Double Punk IPA, right? Uh, you might have seen the video. You know what? It's weird, man. You know, because I reviewed the Brew Dog, um, the Punk IPA only last week, didn't I? First time I've even drank it, like. Look, guys, I've drank Bushy's beer on the island, man. Quite a lot of it, like, so I'm ahead of everyone, mate. This is. This is kids stuff, all this stuff to me. I'm just, I'm just trying to fill the gaps, you know what I mean, in between, like. But anyway, no, I haven't actually got a drink problem, not like that. I do, it, it appears I drink a lot, but I do take time out in gaps, you know, I do take quite large gaps in between me drinking and that, like. But I have got an ulcer, right, and that's, that's the reason why I'm like, I'm, I want to lose weight, and I've got a bit of an ulcer, and I've got to sort it out. But anyway, before I go all boring and, and, and retire and go all Robinson Crusoe on everyone, We've got this to review. Brew Dog Double Punk IPA. Is it an IPA? Or is it just called Double Punk? The beer that started it all amplified. Right, and it's basically. I mean, think about it, man. I only tried Punk. Brew Dog Punk only last week. Ten years after everyone, like. Which I thought was nice, you see. So anyway, I was I was in the Tesco's today and I was looking at other beers thinking I'll just get a couple in just to, you know, okay. I get beers in, in case anyone knocks on the door. Like yesterday, someone knocked on the door and they had some lagers in the fridge and I gave them a bottle of lager, you know what I mean, before I went to park. Um, I actually got £5, by the way, folks. Someone actually gave me £5 to play a couple of tunes. It was unbelievable. I mean, I actually got five quid for just playing a bit of music. I might be a multi-millionaire in the future, might I? Anyway, back to the beer. Brew Dog Double Punk on the shelves. I was actually I misread the shelf. You know the label. I thought I was looking at something else, and it was like you know you get like it says four for six pound. And I was going, wow, that's good, man. You know what I mean? Put the cans in me in me um, basket, uh, and then I realised it was like they were the three pound fifty each. Look, it's a full can. The three pound fifty each, guys. You know what I mean? I thought, oh my word, this has got to be a fine beer because there's cans there for three pound, isn't there? Um, Duvel is two pound fifty for the bottle, isn't it? Duvel tri uh, triple citra. So three pound fifty, mate. That's a huge amount of money to pay for one can of beer, right? And the thing is, it's what the the, the percentage is. It's double double punk, you see. So eight eight point two percent. Eight point two percent. Dangerous. Dangerous. 8.2% double punk. See if there's any right writing on it. Nothing, just the ingredients. Um, yeah. And this is straight off the shelf in Tesco's, right, folks? I know people are saying, on, on YouTube and stuff, people are saying, um, like someone did actually say to me, say, you just like getting drunk, don't you, Bruce, when you review the beers? Well, I, sort of. I, 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 like, when I was younger, I didn't drink much, you see, guys. I just drank on and off. I wasn't really a heavy drinker when I was younger. It took me... I couldn't afford it, basically. So I'd get, like, like little treats getting drunk every now and then as a punk rocker, you know what I mean? But, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm 55, and I've still never been an alcoholic, you know what I mean? But I've been very, very close to it, let's put it that way, like... A couple of occasions, you're know, really close to it, man. When you're talking about someone who can drink a whole bottle of absinthe, I, I mean, a full bottle of absinthe in one night, 68% on their own, straight with no water or sugar or nothing, man. You're talking like <laughs> mental illness alert, mental illness alert. All right, the Brew Punk, 8%, 8.2%, three pound fifty a can. I have got to try this, right? And hopefully I'll get like two cans tonight, I don't know, 8%. I, 
I hope it's going to be my last B review for a couple of months or something until I shed the pounds, right? Anyway, yeah, I've got a couple more clips from the park to upload where I'm just jamming and stuff and not really, you know. The, the clip I put up yesterday, I was actually using my headset microphone for the first time and man, it sounded great, you know what I mean? Alright, let's crack, okay, let's crack open the can and see what's inside. No fumes, no gas. Strong game. Um, okay, let's go. Got me big game. Um, Stein. Me Viking Stein. Viking Stein glass. But I was so impressed with the Punk IPA. Right, now everyone says on YouTube you've got to buy it directly from Brewdog Mail Order or whatever, like. So what everyone's saying basically is when you go on Tesco's and you pick these things off the shelf, it's no good. Is that what people are trying to say? I don't get what, what people are trying to say. If it comes from Brewdog, it comes from Brewdog, doesn't it, right? Well, I've seen a couple of reviews of this. And it is quite new, isn't it? It only got released last month, this. Um, but everyone's reviews... They say it's mind-blowing or, you know... And I didn't even know it existed, I didn't even check that out, I didn't notice, like... i just seen it today in Tesco's. Time check, by the way, it's 20.34. It's 34 minutes past 8 in the evening. On the... 25th, is it? 20, 25th? The 20th, Tuesday the 25th of August, 2020. Alright, man, the aroma from that is beautiful, like... Um, it smells amazing. Smells really good. Alright, there you go. There's not much more I can say, you know the score. I was really into the uh, Punk IPA. Thought it was quality, you know what I mean, myself personally. So I thought, let's see what they've got in this, man. Double Punk. And it's brand new, it's quite new drink, isn't it? It's only been on the shelves for, I don't know, about a month or something like that. And I watched two reviews today of other people trying it, and both of them thought it was fantastic, so I thought. Let's do a review. Okay, there's the colour. It's hazy. It's not as crystal clear as I've seen other people's. So it obviously differs from can to can. Kind of hazy. That, like, prostitutes your eye look about it, like. <laughs> like see the carbs? Like, the bubbles just rising up slowly there, like. The only way is up! <laughs> okay, man. Looks good. Um, looks like homebrew. Looks like... Three, two finger head! <laughs> nah, I'm, I, people think I'm taking them. I do impersonations, you see, guys. And I've just been... I'm not, I'm not really... Um, I do impersonations, and I haven't really used that on YouTube as a weapon or anything, you know what I mean? I can... I can actually... Do, I'm like the Joe Longthorn of Birkenhead. That's what, like... Like, no Joe Longthorn. He sings, like, Frank Sinatra and F and Elvis and all that, like... Well, I'm the Birkenhead version of Joe Longthorn, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, we don't have the same ending as Joe Longthorn, like, but, you know... All right, lovely colour. We've wasted enough time. Let's... Let's dive... Let's dive straight in and see what we've got. All right, let's go. I'm actually watching them, the beer craft channel. What's it called? The channel. Craft. Real. Oh, what's it? What's he called? The channel. Real Ale Craft Beer. I'm watching a live. He's, he's on live at the moment, like here. Yeah, I watch man. Look. I put him in the. I put him in the beer review, so you know who I'm talking about. I might get a copyright strike for this. Greetings, it's beer o'clock time! <laughs> nah, he's actually a good reviewer, you know what I mean? I've actually given him... Um, I've watched some of his reviews and I've been quite impressed on how, how, he, how much he knows. He, he does know his stuff, doesn't he? From a, a brewer's perspective and everything, like a landlord or a pub. A barman or whatever, I don't know. I'm just a drink, I'm just a pisshead. <laughs> I'm just an ordinary every day, just boring old piss head and not you know. Alright, let's go, let's dive in. I'm dying to try this, like, it smells nice. It smells like a lot of other beers, but extensively grapefruit. 
definitely grapefruit. Okay, let's go. Very bitter. I mean, it reminds me of homebrew. It reminds me of good homebrew with the grapefruity flavour. Like a good quality. You know, someone does a homebrew really well. It tastes like that. Very nice though. I love that prostitute's urine look about it. Like, <laughs> I love that golden shower look about it. It looks nice. <laughs> Nah, I tell you, look man, I'm only joking, if anyone takes that seriously, you know, I'll get Mary Whitehouse or something writing a letter or something like that, you know. Alright man, the taste, very bitter, very bitter like marmalade, you know, we have marmalade on toast or something, or, or apricots, and you know, that little, like, little bitterness at the back of your throat. That's there again, <laughs> it's there again, right. <laughs> I'm just laughing at something. Look, guys. No, I best not show it, like in case anyone's offended. I'm looking at a picture on my computer of what I think of the Mormon Jesus. You know, the false Jesus, the false Christ. And it's quite offensive, but it's not blasphemy. It's against the Mormon Jesus. You know what I mean? It's nothing to do with the real one, like. You know. But anyway, I'm enjoying this. It tastes nice. Um, not mind blowing. Not mind blowing in the taste department, like. But quality. Quality. We go for the big swig now. It's a man's drink. It's definitely a man's drink. Um, whoa, it's got an overtone of a real ale in there, man. Like a sort of like a real proper ale. But that IPA thing, that grapefruit thing, brings it into the future. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's a nice drink, that. Um, straight off the cuff, mate. I mean. 8.2% right alcohol this is basically reminding me in its it, the way it can be hazy or clear one minute the next from you know from one minute to the next to be hazy or clear right but immediately Loch Lomond Brave Hop springs to mind which is about 8% isn't it or something like that but that's what it reminds me of Loch Lomond, Brave Hop. It's in that category. It feels good. It's warm. It tastes nice. <sighs> Man, you'd just be, if you're in a party and everyone's drinking that, it'd be quite an atmosphere. See, now I'm watching this channel and look, man. This, it's why I have to drink. I can't help myself. It's like watching this. Look, man. She was doing, she's pulling it out and that. And honestly, mate, I watch these programs just to see, like, you know, what people want to do. And look, you can't, what's off you see me, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I feel terrible, you know, because one, one of my viewers said to me, like, you know, I said to him, like, you know, it's my custom. Like, you know, if someone gives me a credit or a compliments or something. My little custom gesture back is like, I'll buy you a drink one day, you know what I mean? Or at a local pub or something, I'm eating in a pub, what's the fuck do you match? I'll buy you a drink, you know what I mean? Because you appreciated me music. And he'd come back to me saying, oh, I've had a drink problem in the past, Bruce, so I don't drink anymore, you know what I mean? But I appreciate it. I'm like, oh, man, you know, I feel terrible when that happens, you know what I mean? Because, you know, people might think you're trying to be a tempter or whatever, like, and you don't know that, do you? You don't know people's history, like, but, man, it, it golden rule, mate. There's no such thing as alcohol that's good for you, right? If you can get on in life without drinking, then you are a healthier person. That's as simple as that, like. We are literally harming our livers. <laughs> We're doing serious damage to our livers, our kidneys. Like, evil can evil on a motorbike, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> It is stupid, but we won't know it until we're in the hospital and the doctor's telling us we've got to have a liver removed or something in it, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know what to say, like, I was a bit like, get on with it, mate, give me the iron lung and just get on with it. Just give me the iron lung and let me go home and buy a drink. <laughs> Going home in an iron lung. <laughs> All right, man. That's nice, man. There's nothing, I'll tell you what, though, I'm a bit... Because of other people's 
opinions on YouTube, right? Two people who reviewed or watched it, like, and their opinions, I expected a lot more, right? Because, as a rule, they don't seem to, a lot of people don't like Brewdog, do they? They think they're selling out or something, I don't know. It's all new to me, this guy's. Um, so yeah, nothing mind blown. I'm sure the, the the beauty in this is like it, it's a Scottish thing, isn't it? Um, it's all about the strength, isn't it? The eight point two percent. But Brave Hop, mate, Loch Lomond Brave Hop has already um, kind of reached this point. This is it's like one of my favourite drinks in it, what I've tried in the past is Brave Hop. You know, Loch Lomond, that's one of the best drinks I've tried. I've only bought it a couple of times because you can't buy it, can you? You've got to live in Scotland or whatever. They'll get it in, like, on purpose, like a tantalising little tease, don't they? Take the mickey. But there's nothing tantalising about drinking, mate, unless you drink regularly, you know what I mean? You know, when you drink regularly, you don't really... You miss it, don't you? But when you don't really drink much, man... If you know anyone out there, you can literally get on in life without any drugs or drink, man. Get on with it, be an angel. That's basically what happens. You, your body turns into a bit of like a more divine being. It's as simple as like, you know, I don't want to get all like sort of, you know, weighing myself down. <laughs> I'm hiding the Kruzovic logo, like. Kruzovic. Because I, I lifted this glass from a pub, you know, and <laughs> walked out with it. Look at it, mate. Who could resist? <clears throat> very familiar taste like I say there's a lot more flavours in there that I can describe definitely punk IPA got hints of the punk IPA but all things considered if, if, if Brewdog were the first company to, to coin this kind of style of flavour and it is getting tedious guys to me personally um, I don't mind a nice tame lager I don't mind an ale that's got like hardly any flavour as long as it's got a nice vibe you know, it's about the vibe and the buoyancy, isn't it? It's about the buoyancy when you're in there, he's like... You know what I mean? You're either up or down, like... Well, yeah, man. I'm waffling and boring. I am so boring. <sighs> yeah, it's quite a strong bit of aftertaste. Brave hop. Brave Hop. I'll, I'll have to try another Brave Hop in the future and do a comparison because that's the match, I think. Definitely. And it's Scottish, isn't it? The, these are Scottish brewers. They put that prostitute urine in there, man. Yo. The Scottish beer made with the finest prostitute urine in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Pish. I don't know. Nah, I'm only being, I'm not being weird. Brewdog might think I'm being insulting in that way. Nah, it's not bad, that man. It's not bad. Um, I've got a couple of other reviews to upload. Um, I did one the other day of Modelo and I've, I haven't uploaded it. I've got a couple of beer reviews, you know, like um, a couple of other drinks I tried. It just looks bad, you see. You know, if I put a load of videos up and you see them all one after another, and I'm like sitting there like that in nearly every picture. It's like, it looks like I'm a bad algae, but you can clearly see that I'm obviously not, you know what I mean? But I'm telling you now, guys, I know the beer reviewers on YouTube who review. Just join, go on that channel, the, the Real Ale or Craft Beer channel, right? And, and you know, when you get your notifications, count how many notifications come in telling you he's trying a new drink, mate. He's got to be an alcoholic, mate, and he doesn't realise it. He's got to be, man. He's drinking every five minutes, mate. <laughs> I'm not knocking him for it, man. I'm saying, man, if you can carry on, like, whilst being an alcoholic, brilliant, like, you know what I mean? Boy, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> He's got to be an alcoholic. They've got to be alcoholic, some of them beer reviewers, and they haven't admit they're, they're in denial, you know what I mean? I wish I was an alcoholic, but I can't. I wouldn't be able to handle it, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to handle it. It'd do me head. Right, let's do a let's do a cum shot. You see the foam there, it's nice and uh, consistent. There we go. You 
can't see the beer through that at all, can you? It's just foamy and white. You see how important that is? When, you, when you're reviewing a drink, when you get shot halfway down the glass, some drinks the head's gone completely. Some drinks it's like a ring around the edge. Some drinks there's a little bit of foam in the middle floating on its own. They're all different, man. It's weird, man. Okay. Yeah, I might go on for it. I might say, I'll see how I feel later. I might do a little bit of a speech later. Yeah, I might do a little speech later on YouTube. Okay, I don't know if I've finished this off. I mean, 8.3%. I feel the warmth. I'm feeling the whininess, you know what I mean? It's Man, these drinks are seriously... You know, like... Compared to what we're used to, you know, we grew up with the lager. We had harp and things like that. And, oh, man, then. Cold 45. <laughs> Here's one of the best things I ever did when I was a teenager. Before I get off, man, stories of your as you, stories of your when I was a drinker, when I was a punk rocker. And we came up with this plan of um, the the ultimate snake bite. And the ultimate snake bite was like you get a full bottle of cider. Everyone and we were all in this stable, all getting drunk, punks when we were younger, like right. We all had one can of harp lager, right? One can of harp lager each, and one bottle of cider each, you know, like a bottle of old English or something each. And there's about five of us in this stable all getting drunk. It was his sister's stable, like, you know, there was no horse in there, like. And um, we did the ultimate snake bite, which is basically, you get your bottle of cider, you take the top off, and you know them tubes, you know them tubes you get in, in the physics lab in school? for the Bunsen burners, you know them rubber tubes? That was our straws, right? We put our straw into the bottle of cider, right? And we all did dared each other, so the day this was the snake bite of all snake bites, right? And we had to go, drink half of the bottle of cider immediately through the straw, right? Stop halfway, open the can of half lager, right? Put this tube in the can of half lager. All of us did it at the same time, right? Boom! We had to finish the can of half lager in one go. We had to literally, you know, like down in it in one go, but with a tube, you know what I mean? So we went, and we all had to do it, and, and our, all the lager was gone in our cans, yeah? Right, so then we went, put the tube back in the bottle of cider, and then we continued, you know, we like, we all had to continue, and we were like, and by the time we, we were trying to continue with the bottle of cider, we were all sauced already, it hit us, do you know what I mean? Half a bottle of cider, a can of lager, just boom! That was what we call, that was our invention of a snake bite, right? So we all finished off our cider bottles, like, with our tubes and that, right? And by the time we, there was a circle of us all sitting in the garage with the little black and white telly, battery operated, right, watching the telly, punks and that. We were on the Ford Estate, actually. By the time we finished our bottle of cider, we were all falling off our chairs, laughing and everything and that, like, like one of the lads. He had a, you know when you burst out laughing and you got snot in your nose? It's, he, he went like, and this like bubble, like it was huge, a huge bubble of snot like that on his face, like off his nose, like we were all looking at him going, look at up, look at the size of the bubble. And then it went pop, and we all burst out laughing likewise. And we literally blacked out in that stable. We all fell asleep, you know what I mean? And we all woke up like with bad, bad hangovers, man. But we were off our heads, man. Just a bottle of cider and a can of beer. The ultimate snake bite, you know what I mean? Try it, I'm telling you, you could be the most hardened drinker on earth, man. And with the straw, you know what I mean? I've got a story as well, it's on YouTube already somewhere else where I went to a punk party with all the punks in Birkenhead and I got drunk in five minutes and it was bad, right? I nearly died, you know what I mean? I had a really serious, like, the Jimi Hendrix experience, you know, nearly had. <laughs> I had the Jimi Hendrix experience basically. That's another story. I've put it on YouTube somewhere else, like, but I'll do it again, like, at some point. Anyway, let's finish this off and see if we've got over the old half an hour. Quick, Bruce. Oh, 24 minutes. 
Right, gotta get off before for half an hour with this camera. Alright, let's see what we've got. I'm feeling merry, I'm feeling happy, you can tell, can't you? I'm feeling good, like. Yeah, Brave Hop. That's its match, Brave Hop. It's the only thing I can think of. This guy just writes that bitterness and. Oh, it's nice, man. It's good beer. Scary, scary. I shouldn't do this. I should have a straw. Acidity at the bottom of the glass there, mate, was like it was almost like swigging vodka or whiskey or something. Man, that is rancid, like, <sighs> but in the nicest way, like in the most adult state. Make lolly ices out of that in the summer, mate. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Don't know why the fit is falls in my head. Make some lolly ices. That's nice, that man. High quality, 8.2%. And I'd definitely put it right beside Loch Lomond Brave Hop because I love that beer, I love Brave Hop. Good feel, good factor. Similar thing, it can be clear and it can be hazy. Depends on the batch, doesn't it? But yeah, nice one. Um, I'll definitely, ooh, I don't know. It's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's a 10 out of 10 for me. It's a 10 out of 10. I would gladly drink this stuff a thousand times, all day, all night, if I was an alcoholic. But not yet. I'll save enough for another time later. <laughs> all right, man. Yeah, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. I'll actually give it a 10 out of 10, because it's so, woo, that last gulp there, mate. Um, I actually thought like methylated spirits, like I was thinking, oh my word, what are they doing in Scotland, mate? Bloody no. Alright man, 10 out of 10, highly recommended. Um, and it's available in Tesco's, you say, you could pick this up in Tesco's, whereas like the Loch Lomond stuff, you can't buy it unless they have it in Lidl every now and then, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Scotland. Scotland. Thanks for watching.